Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week to 10 days. Well, today's video videos will take us to around the 27th of December. We'll be able to extend out a bit beyond that with the extended GFS, which will take us into the beginning of the new year. We'll also have a look at CFS V2 uh, for the next month. I'll bring you up to date for all of the developments in the stratosphere in terms of the uh, stratospheric warming that's going to get going in a few days' time. So it's going to be quite an extended video. Hope you find it interesting and informative. Uh, just a big thank you to all of you for your uh, Get Well Soon messages, your tweets and emails and uh, posts are um, greatly appreciated. So big thank you to all of you for your Get Well Soon messages and also big thank you to all of you for your cold remedies. I've got a uh, long list now of um, potential cold remedies. I will endeavour to go through all of them and uh, try them out. So big thank you to all of you for your cold remedies and for your get well soon messages. Feeling a little bit better today. I've still got a little bit of a cough, but um, it's a lot better than it was over the weekend. So hopefully we'll be able to get through the video without too much cough. Now, I want the cough to settle down because I've got at the weekend to do the Christmas Day historic video. And I did announce last night on social media and at Gap as well as this, that um, the historic video for uh, Christmas Day this year is going to be looking at 1968-1969, winter of 68-69, which had some very, very interesting uh, weather indeed. But obviously that is cough permitting. Won't be able to do a long video if I'm uh, coughing away. So I'm hoping it's going to settle down between uh, the, now and the weekend when I'm going to record the video. Um, and all being well, that will be uh, with you on Christmas Day. Uh, this year's Christmas Day historic video we'll be looking at the winter of 1968-1969. Uh, uh, I say the cough is quite a lot better, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to get through this without too much uh, stopping. And I'm going to start off by having a look at what's happening in the stratosphere today. So this is from weatheriscool.com. This is depicting the uh, zonal winds at 10 HPA over the North Pole. Now there are several coloured lines here. We don't have time to go through explaining all of them. Feature this in the winter updates. So if you're kept up with winter updates, you'll know roughly what this chart is showing. The black line here is the trend line for the strength of the zona winds this time of year in the North Pole in the stratosphere uh, at 10 HPA. So obviously the zona winds are strengthening at this time of the year. We are into the winter, so you expect zona winds to be at their strongest really around now, but they will be all year. Now, the green lines here are uh, showing the forecast uh, strength of the zonal winds from the GFS ensembles. So we're starting off around here, already a little bit weaker than average, uh, but the GFS ensembles are now forecasting a real drop in the zonal winds. Uh, before the end of the year. So this is kind of like New Year's Eve just here, this dashed line just there separating December uh, from January. So a crash, a collapse of the zone of winds is being forecast. I think pretty much all GFS ensemble members now are seeing a reversal of the zonal winds over the North Pole. That zero number there is very important because that is the line that uh, we've got to get to to have a reversal of the zonal winds. I think pretty much all uh, GFS ensemble members now are taking us into a reversal of the zonal winds. The ensemble meme at thicker green line is going down to that kind of level. Some ensemble members are absolutely collapsing the zonal winds. They're going down to the kind of level we was at last uh, winter in February uh, when we had again a sudden stratospheric warming that reversed the zonal winds and eventually uh, led us to the blocking that caused the beast from the east. Um, so, again, it's all still on course in terms of the warming of the stratosphere, which I'll show you in a moment, in terms of the reversal of the zonal winds in the North Pole. This is very much still on course to happen through, uh, something around the 22nd, reversal of the zonal winds probably happens around or just after Christmas Day. CFS V2 is with this as well. So the other coloured lines, there's three pink and one blue. Uh, line May are the four CFS V2 members. All of those are going down to that sort of level, either at the very end of uh, January or into the start of February, which again is telling us that the CFS is very bullish, along with the GFS and its ensembles, very bullish about getting a reversal of the zonal wings 
uh, in the next couple of weeks. So this is how the temperatures are looking at 10 HPA at the moment over North Pole in the stratosphere. We've got blue and purple colours here showing the cold temperatures uh, at the moment that are uh, churning away along the polar vortex over the North Pole. Let's run you through the very latest forecast. This is from Metroseal. FR, this is the GFS operational run. So again, there's that warming starting on the 22nd of December. It's been modelled so well, right around 384 hours this has been modelled and, modelled and the GFS hasn't wavered on it at all really. So there it is, still focused on the 22nd of December. That's uh, sudden stratospheric warming starts over Siberia intensifies as we run up to Christmas and it heads in towards the North Pole. So that is Christmas Day with that significant warming of the stratosphere moving out of Siberia and into the North Pole. These blue and purple curves have been squashed down into uh, Canada and the Atlantic and Northern Europe. So um, that's a displacement of the polar vortex. It's not a split at this stage. It is a displacement of the polar vortex. I mean, as, we're, as we run into the extended range with this GFS run, you'll see we continue to have this displacement of the polar vortex. We don't get rid of it. We don't split it. Um, so polar vortex is still there, albeit in a much weakened state and displaced uh, at its roots. Anyway, displaced out of the Arctic and into the North Atlantic and Northern Europe. The North Pole itself um, is beginning to see that warming easing off. So this, at the moment, this doesn't entirely get rid of the polar vortex. That's the one complicating factor uh, about this. Normally, when you get this level of warming that we have here on Christmas Day, you would expect to split the polar vortex. It doesn't look like we're going to do that at the moment. Um, just a displacement of the polar vortex. But it, that may change, or we may get a second. Uh, we may get a second warming. Actually, so the first one we might um, displace the polar vortex and weaken it down a lot. And then we might get a second warming sometime in early January that kind of like finishes it off and really splits it apart. That's the uh, operational GFS run. This is the parallel uh, GFS run. And again, we see this warming of the stratosphere starting round Siberia on the 22nd of December. All perfectly on course from what it has been forecast for many days now. That's Christmas Day with the warming of the stratosphere from Siberia moving into the North Pole itself, displacing those cold temperatures and the polar vortex at its roots down into the North Atlantic. Uh, and then we run into the extended range with the parallel uh, GFS run. And uh, we do, again, keep that uh, displacement of the polar vortex going. So we don't quite split it. Uh, we don't quite split polar vortex. We have it displaced across northern parts of Europe with these green and yellow colours pushing into the Arctic itself. I mean, this is a very significant event that's taking place over the North Pole in the next couple of weeks. Even without the split in the polar vortex, you would expect some significant developments in terms of blocking from this, um, from this warming of the stratosphere starting in Siberia on the 22nd of December. Ideally, to get a, a proper um, uh, proper st sun stratospheric warming and blocking uh, afterwards, you want, ideally you want to see a split in the polar vortex, but I don't think it, ha it doesn't have to happen. You don't have to have a split polar vortex to get blocking. Just something that ideally you would quite like to see if you are favouring a more blocked outcome. Uh, this is how the ECMWF is forecasting things from uh, the University of Berlin. So this is the 23rd of December. Obviously that major warming of the stratosphere is taking place over Siberia at that point. The North Pole helpfully is indicated on this chart with this uh, black uh, cross just here. So again we have this major warming of the stratosphere occurring at 10 HPA. Uh, which is kind of, like, kind of like one of the top levels of the atmosphere and stratosphere over North Pole. Uh, and that's uh, warming is happening over Siberia on the 23rd of, uh, of December. That starts to moving towards the Arctic as we get through to Christmas Eve. So this is the chart for Christmas Eve indicating, again, very intense warming of the stratosphere taking place and beginning to move in towards the North Pole uh, as well. 
And that's Christmas Day. And again, we move that to warming further in towards the North Pole as the cold, um, the cold stratospheric temperatures are displaced down into the northern part of the Atlantic. And then that is Boxing Day. 26th of December, and you see by this point we have got a major warming of the, of the stratosphere over the North Pole itself taking place, uh, so again that's where the North Pole, the actual North Pole is, where we've got that black uh, cross just there, and you can see those red colours have infiltrated right into the top of the North Pole, and so that's taking us on the scale here on the side, that's taking us up to that sort of level, minus 15, minus 10 Celsius. So obviously, again, a very, very significant and substantial warming of the stratosphere is being forecast here uh, at 10 HPA. Going a bit further down to 30 HPA, which is a little bit closer to the troposphere, that's the boundary level of the actual weather is taking place. Uh, we see that on the 24th, on Christmas Eve, getting a little bit of warming, beginning to appear at 30 HPA, although still looking quite cold over the North Pole. Uh, itself, and then as we go through to Christmas Day, you'll notice that warming at 30 HPA is intensifying a little bit more. So clearly, signs that this is propagating down the layers of the stratosphere to move closer to the troposphere. Uh, that's how things looking at, at uh, 30 HPA on Boxing Day. Again, quite a significant warming of the stratosphere is taking place then. Still not quite making it into the North Pole itself at this point. But uh, again, you'd expect that to appear a little bit further on compared to the warming that's happening at 10 HPA. So this warming doesn't really get into the North Pole itself until Christmas Day, Boxing Day at 10 HPA. So it will probably be around the 28th, 29th of December that you start to see it lower down at 30 HPA. But basically, it all seems to be on course. The only thing we're missing is, as I say, a uh, is a split in the polar vortex rather than a displacement. Um, zonal winds have been forecast uh, like this from um, University of Berlin by the ECMWF uh, model. So, fairly strong zonal winds coming up in the next uh, few days. Then a dramatic weakening. This is at 1 HP. This is right at the very top of the stratosphere. A dramatic weakening at 1 HPA, taking us into a reversal of the zona wings at 1 HPA, presumably by Boxing Day. Uh, looking at 10 and 30 HPA, we don't yet, still don't yet see uh, a reversal of the zona wings being forecast there. We know the GFS and its ensembles are forecasting a reversal of the zona wings at 10 HPA by Christmas. We're not yet seeing that on the ECM WS, so that will be something else to keep an eye on. We, we do know that the GFS, GFS ensembles want to reverse the zona wings at 10 HPA. We'll wait and see whether the ECM starts doing that. Certainly is going for a reduction of blue line is, um, is 10 HPA, so that's where it is. Uh, right now, and that's where it's forecast to be by sort of Christmas. So uh, quite a big weakening of the zona winds taking place over the next 10 days, but it doesn't quite get down to this level yet, which will be where we go to if we have a reversal of the zona winds. So should, we should wait and see on that, but essentially it's all still on course, and uh, once it happens, it'll be a case of waiting to see what the effects are. These are the 500 millibar high anomaly flow charts from the Penn State University. We've got the ECMWF here on the top and the GFS, which I'm in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millibar, so about three is there in the actual high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red extrapolates high pressure blue to low pressure. So we find we've got this area of above average heights in the 7 to 10 day time frame over the UK and over much of Northern Europe as well. So um, this is taking us to Christmas, of course. It's taking us up to 27th of December. The jet stream is down there and doing something uh, a little bit like that. So it was very anticyclonic, actually. High pressure becoming increasingly influential as we move through Christmas and in towards the end of the year. We did a video about this yesterday, uh, saying that it does look as well. We're increasingly moving towards high pressure towards the latter stages of the year. And we see good evidence of that on the high anomaly flow chart. This is just as the stratospheric warming is taking place over Siberia and potentially into the Arctic, of course. 
The uh, GFS is very similar. Again, anticyclonic signal in the 7 to 10 day time frame. Lots of high pressure uh, influences. The flow and the jet is up there somewhere. So no real northern blocking. Uh, low pressure is actually up over top of the pole in the 7 to 10 day time frame. And we're under a ridge of high pressure. And we see signs of this on the uh, GFS ensembles as well. So um, this is the uh, GFS ensemble for Cardiff. We're at Cardiff in Wales today. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Cardiff. Starting off a little bit mild on average today. Getting a bit cooler in the next couple of days. And then it goes mild, or perhaps even very mild, over the weekend. Around Christmas, we have a very slight uh, dip in the temperature. So Christmas Day possibly still looking uh, a little bit cooler. Then after that, the upper air temperatures are lifting up through the final week of December and into the start of the new year. We see those temperatures are becoming uh, really quite mild. At the same time, though, it's drying out. So for precipitation, we have uh, a lot of rainfall spikes coming up to Christmas. Plenty of uh, rainfall on the way in the next week. Then after Christmas, quite clearly now, there is a very defined drying trend. So again, this is telling us we're moving towards high pressure. So at the same time as the upper air temperatures are lifting up, we're also drying out. High pressure, therefore, is obviously building in. And even though the upper air temperature is going quite mild through this last week of December, it is possible we might get some sort of inversion taking place underneath that high pressure, which is where it's milder aloft than it is um, on the surface. And if we get an inversion, then it will be colder, actually, than the upper air temperatures would suggest. Remember, this uh, period where these upper air temperatures are lifting up is around the same time frame as the sun's stratospheric warming is going on uh, over Siberia and potentially into uh, the Arctic. And that is something that you tend to get quite a bit, actually. High pressure tends to be um, one of the initial responses, or seem to be one of the initial responses that you get when a sudden stratospheric warming is happening. So I'll take you back to 2013. Uh, this is the 5th of January, 2013. There was a very significant sudden stratospheric warming which started around, again, around Siberia. Uh, in the first week of January 2013, there it is with those red cars. Again, this is from the archive at metroshield.fr. Now, if you compare that to where the um, sun stratospheric warming is going to be starting around the 22nd of December. So let's go back to around there. That's where it starts, and that's where it is by around Christmas Eve. So it's in a very similar uh, sort of position, actually, uh, to where it happened um, in uh, 2013. But different, the difference was in 2013, we split the vortex. But anyway, that's how this sun stratospheric warming was looking over Siberia on the 5th of January 2013. If I move you through to around, let's go through to around the 10th of January 2013. You'll see that what's happened there is that we've clearly split the polar vortex. So uh, we aren't seeing signs of that at the moment with this sudden stratospheric warming. We've got the warm, uh, warm and average temperatures covering uh, the North Pole. And then the two, air the two blue areas are, are around here indicating the split that has occurred in the polar vortex. We are not forecasting that at the moment. But that's what happened in 2013. Now, while that was going on, we actually went into a very mild and dry period through the early part of January 2013. So this is from the 5th of January 2013, uh, this um, chart from uh, Western Central uh, Archive. And you see we've got this ridge here covering most of Western Europe, bringing up this very mild, balmy, southwesterly wind. So temperatures were widening to double digits. It's almost a little taste of spring through the opening days of January 2013 and that stayed with us through the first week before the high pressure then started to migrate northwards talking about we're up to the 10th of january 2013 and all of a sudden that high pressure has gone from sitting across um spain and france to sitting in the norwegian sea and that's a much colder position for high pressure to be in and eventually we went off into really quite a cold and wintry spell through january 2013 
and 13. For example, that's 21st of January 2013, with a big block over Scandinavia, low pressure in the Atlantic being blocked, and this was a bit of a snow event going on there on the 21st of January 2013. Now, the one difference between this year and that year is that we are not yet forecasting a complete split of the polar vortex. But it is interesting that while these significant warmings of the stratosphere are taking place within the polar region, uh, it seems to be that the initial response for Northern Europe, anyway, is a high pressure to build. And that high pressure can often be sitting across central or southwestern parts of Europe, and it can actually be very mild to start off with. And that could be the kind of thing we see over the Christmas week. Temperature anomalies from the 17th to the 25th of December are forecast to be above average for much of Western Europe, although notice central parts and central western parts of Russia getting really, really cold there. But for most parts of Europe, the 17th to 25th of December is looking very mild with the temperature anomaly. Precipitation anomalies from the 20th, 17th to 25th Christmas Day are average to above average. GFS looks unsettled for Thursday with low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic, bringing showers or longer spells of rain. That stays with us into the weekend as well. This is Christmas Eve, looking unsettled to the end of a band of rain, probably pushing through on Christmas Eve. That's Christmas Day, a little bit of a transient ridge building in from the southwest could give us a slightly drier, brighter day on uh, Christmas Day. That's Boxing Day, high pressure beginning to get stronger over France, starting to break us out of that unsettled weather. And then through the re re remainder of the year, the high pressure becoming increasingly influential. There we are on the 29th of December, for example, with high pressure covering many western parts of Europe. The UK is included in that, so mostly dry, but probably very mild, except in, unless there's an inversion underneath the centre of this ridge, and then you would get frost and fog. Um, that's how we look at the very end of the GFS run, which takes us to the 2nd of January. High pressure just beginning to pull out a little bit away from us, starting to bring down perhaps signs of a bit of a colder northwesterly type wind. No sign of any blocking, though, at that point within the uh, northern latitudes. This is how the GM is looking, and again, it's very unsettled for the end of the week with low pressure in control of the weather. Up to Christmas, it stays pretty unsettled but then we start to get this ridge building close to the country on christmas day that will bring us a drier brighter but potentially rather colder uh, day on christmas day <coughs> excuse me and then we get to boxing day and the 27th of december and by then the high pressure is really intensifying it's centuries actually over the top of the uk so that's a colder uh, post christmas compared to the gfs because that high pressure is centered over the top of the country that will be bringing frost definitely and maybe quite a bit of fog notice it looks really quite cold as well on the eastern side of this high pressure across much of the eastern and northeastern parts of europe the upper air temperature is showing cold air really is digging in there over towards the eastern side of europe in fact much of europe is cold we're just on the periphery of it the upper air temperatures are mild but actually under the under the on the surface underneath that high it would be pretty cold with frost and potentially fog too the ecm is unsettled at the end of the week with low pressure dominating uh, right up to christmas it looks pretty unsettled uh, then we get to christmas and high pressure again like with the gm high pressure is increasingly starting to dominate the weather that's how we look as we go a little bit beyond uh, christmas so that is christmas uh, day actually uh, with the E7 Earth, that's Boxing Day. High pressure increasingly taking over the pattern over Christmas. That's as far as we can go to day 10. Thursday, 27th of December, has that high pressure nearly over top of the UK. Again, technically, with the upper air temperatures, it's a mild ridge. Uh, no problems with the upper air temperatures. But underneath that high pressure, I suspect you will get fog. Um, and you'll definitely get a lot of frost night and morning as well. These are the different options that are on the table from the ECMWF ensembles in terms of the postage stamps from the Icelandic uh, Met Office for Christmas Day. So we've got 13 ensemble members that have a ridge of high pressure out to the west of the UK and uh, low pressures over across central parts of Europe. The flow of majestic, something like that. So they're mainly dry, quiet, probably near normal temperatures. 
Maybe we've got another 12 that has the ridge just that little bit further away from us towards the northwest. Deeper trough to the east. So that's got more of a gradient. So that'll be a little bit colder with the wind coming around the top of that or the side of that high pressure. Probably bringing some pretty cold air down from the north. We've got another nine that have the high pressure in that position, kind of like to west of Ireland. They're a milder solution. They're bringing in more of an Atlantic uh, flow with the jet stream flow rather like that. Then there's another nine, so a real split in the placement of this ridge. You can see the ridge is dominating, but we've got all these different options in terms of the exact position of this ridge of high pressure. So these nine uh, just here have the ridge uh, just to the south of Iceland, but then also extending through the UK. They're probably mostly dry and pretty frosty, I would have thought, those solutions and then we have eight to have high pressure stretched out from Iceland through to Scandinavia. Uh, they have low pressure down for southwest. So they're bringing up a sort of a southeasterly type wind. Um, and they're a little bit more unsettled as well with that low pressure to the southwest, southwest uh, rather closer to us. So it looks like this high pressure is going to be um, very important for the Christmas period. But it'll, it's at that position will determine whether it's a mild ridge where we have a mainly dry and mild day or whether we have a mainly dry but quite cold uh, Christmas day. The exact position will um, determine that. If we go out to 360 hours with the postage stamps, this takes us to New Year's Day, uh, we find that, again, we've got 19 members of the ECL ensembles that have a ridge over the top of the UK for, um, for New Year's Day. So that'll be a cold, frosty, dry, foggy, probably, uh, New Year. Then we have another 17 that have a high pressure, again, over the top of the UK, uh, but extending just that little bit further eastwards as well. A little bit more influence from the jet stream perhaps to the north of the country. And then we have 15 that have high pressure around Greenland and Iceland, but also a ridge, uh, ridge across France. Uh, these ones are a little bit more unsettled and relatively mild as well with a flow doing something like that. So to New Year's Day, there's not much sign of anything really cold up to up to New Year's Day with the ECM ensembles. Although this solution just here, which is actually the most favoured option, has a ridge right over top of the country. And so that would be primarily frost and fog type conditions for New Year. Finally, the CFS V2 is uh, looking like this. So these are 500 millibar heights broken down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 17th to the 23rd of December. So the coming week has above average heights to our south and also to the east and to the northeast with low pressure out to the west. These ones are quite unsettled and they're bringing in a westerly flow. Well, this is quite unsettled. It's bringing in a westerly flow. So fairly unsettled in at the weekend running up towards Christmas. This is how um, week two looks. It's Christmas Eve to the 30th of December with above average heights to our south, below average heights out to the northwest. Mild, uh, bringing up the air from the southwest with those ones through the Christmas week. Um, fair amount of dry weather in the south, but some rain at times up in the north. Week three looks like that with the ridge across central parts of Europe. Low pressure is up to the north as well. The flow and the jet is doing something like that. So those ones are mild into the new year also. And then week four, looking like this, uh, it's the 7th to the 13th of January, with uh, below average heights in the Atlantic, above average heights to our southwest. A little bit weaker, though, compared to weeks one and two. These are rather unsettled and, again, quite mild. No sign of any northern blocking resulting from that sudden stratospheric warming at that stage to the middle of uh, January. However, the CFS overall is forecasting uh, now some blocking for January. So this is the 700 millibar height anomaly uh, forecast for January 2019 from the CFS V2. Notice it now has these yellow and orange colours appearing over Greenland. It has the below average heights through the Atlantic into the UK, but also going to the east. And so you could well be for forcing cold air into that area of below average heights that could be that could turn into quite a cold trough as that blocking is strengthening around Greenland and Iceland and then that's how February is looking again a very strong blocking signal 
in February with all of this red and orange around Greenland and going to the north of the UK that's proper genuine northern blocking we have uh, below average heights a trough of low pressure is basically centered over the top of the UK and so again you could well be forcing cold air down into that trough of below average heights in fact I would say February looks better to be forcing cold air into that trough compared to um, January but both months do hold interest there from a northern blocking and winter perspective whether that's down to the model beginning to deal with the effects of this warming of the stratosphere, I'm not sure whether it's just something else that's going on. But certainly the January and February, the blocking signal is strengthening at the moment quite substantially with the CFS V2. Right, so that's probably what I'd say about everything. Half an hour, and I uh, hope you found the video interesting and informative. Tomorrow, we'll have the 30-day uh, ensemble, ECMPF ensemble, look ahead for the UK and for Europe. We'll have another week to 10-day video update as well. It'll bring you up to date with all of the developments over, over the um, stratosphere again. So come back tomorrow for uh, the two videos. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.